Now we come to the non-competitive inhibition. Non-competitive inhibition. What does the name suggest to you? This name tells you that there is no competition between the inhibitor and the substrate. Why there is no competition? Because the inhibitor and the substrate are not structurally similar. There are no structural similarity or the, it is not a structural analog of the substrate. So then do we, will they bind at the same site? No, you cannot bind at the same site because there are no, there is no similarity between them and the active site is very specific. So where does a non-competitive inhibitor bind? It binds to a site other than the active site. Look at the main difference between competitive and non-competitive. Competitive, the inhibitor will bind at the same site as that of the substrate. Whereas in non-competitive, it will bind at a other site. Why? Because it is a, not a structural analog. So there will bind at a site different from the substrate binding site. Now, will they compete? No. It is all, uh, the, when they bind, they bring about certain changes in the enzyme. So inhibitors have no structural similarity, they bind at a site different, they do not compete and does the increase in substrate concentration relieve inhibition? No, it does not relieve the inhibition by increasing the substrate concentration because remember here there is no competition. So the enzyme inhibition may be overcome in certain cases by extensive dialysis in which the inhibitor may be removed. But very rarely this is done, this can happen but a reversible non-competitive inhibition there is only one example and that is heavy metals at lower concentration. Rest all of them are irreversible non-competitive inhibitors. I will be as I will be showing to you in the example. Now what is the effect on the kinetic properties? So in non-competitive inhibition this is something which is asked in the uh, in the MCQs something which is asked. Now in non-competitive inhibition I am going to show it to you in the same graph. So in non-competitive inhibition the Vmax is decreased. So can the Vmax be increased? No, it cannot be increased. Why? Because finally we want to show that there is some inhibition over there. So the inhibition is in the form of decreased Vmax. But look at the Km. The Km will remain the same. The Km will be the same same but Vmax will be decreased. So that is the importance of uh, non-competitive inhibition. These are something which you have to keep on remembering that Km is not changed and Vmax is decreased. Now as I said the irreversible inhibition the irreversible inhibitors bind covalently at the active site of the enzyme. Such type of irreversible inhibitions are also there which are somewhat similar to the competitive inhibitions the, and the, but the, because the bind at the active site, they are highly toxic substances, but the reaction kinetics are similar to non-competitive inhibition. So we go on to the examples. Now one important example is diisopropyl furophosphate. It is known as DFP. DFP irreversibly inhibits the enzyme acetylcholine esterase. This is an organophosphorus compound and it binds crit with the critical serine residue at the active site of the enzyme. Look at it. This is a Though the kinetics will remember, will resemble a non-competitive inhibition, it is somewhat similar to the competitive inhibition because it is a structural. Uh, even though it is not a structural analog, it binds to the binds to the active site. So it covalently binds and brings about inhibition. So this is an exception, and that is why I have shown it here. Inhibition leads to toxic accumulation of acetylcholine and bringing about the neurotoxic effects. Now DFP is a nerve gas delivered by the Germans during the Second World War. Now other examples are the organophosphorus insecticides which are also irreversible inhibition. Now one important irreversible inhibitor is iodoacetate which is the inhibitor of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Cyanide is the irreversible inhibitor of cytochrome oxidates where it binds with the iron atom of the cytochrome oxidase. So here is a table which shows you the difference between competitive and non-competitive inhibition. Look at it. Competitive, the site of action is active site. Non-competitive may or may not be the active site. Structure 
of the inhibitor will be substrate analog, no substrate analog. Inhibition type is usually reversible in competitive, generally irreversible in non-competitive. Effect of excess substrate, inhibition is relieved, no effect. KM is increased, here no change. Vmax, no change. Vmax is decreased. Significance is of competitive inhibition is mainly in pharmacological drug actions. There are other examples in the body like the succinate dehydrogenase and malonate etc. Allopurinol which acts as an inhibitor for xanthine oxidase. Now for non-competitive we have the heavy metal poisoning like lead which inhibits ferrochelates the enzyme by, by, acting, by preventing the action on the substrate ferrous ions, organophosphorus poisoning and cyanide and cytochrome oxidase and this action on cytochrome oxidase are examples of non-competitive inhibition. So with this we come to the end of different types of enzyme inhibitions. Now there is one more enzyme inhibition that is known as uncompetitive. Competitive you have heard, non-competitive you have heard, uncompetitive. Uncompetitive is very rarely seen except for one enzyme and that is a placental alkaline phosphatase which is inhibited by phenylalanine. This is a very rare example which we know of, of uncompetitive. Uncompetitive in this both KM is increased and Vmax is also decreased. Uh, so in non-competitive as you can see KM is not changed and Vmax is decreased whereas in uncompetitive both are changed, both are altered. Both uh, Vmax decreases and KM increases. Very rarely does this happen uncompetitive inhibition. So with this we come to the end of enzyme inhibitions. Thank you.